Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we are making this custom wood seating chart with cardstock tables, perfect for any rustic wedding. This is a great way to incorporate some color into your wedding signage and also a much quicker and easier way than cutting and weeding vinyl like in my other seating chart tutorials. All of the supplies are listed down below in the video description along with a discount for the fonts and SVG. Here is how the final proof looked whenever I sent it to the couple. There are 23 tables and just to fill in the space, we did go ahead and make a find your seat as the header, but this project can be sized to fit your guest count. This is on a 24 by 48 inch piece of stained wood. I have tutorials on how to DIY the wood piece, which I will also link down below. First, I'm going to show you how I designed this in Cricut Design Space. What I did to create this wood backing was just add in a shape to serve as a placeholder. I'm going to unlock that square and change it to the size of my material. Now we need to add in the table, so I add in another square, unlock that and change it to the size that I need. These just ended up being about a five by seven, um, but that is just the sizing that happened to fit on this piece for this wedding and the amount of tables that they had. So you might need to make these larger or smaller depending on the size of your backing and your guest count. So now I change that to the color that we are going to be printing on to white cardstock. And to bring this in a little closer to show you guys exactly how this looks, we have the table number and then all of the names for that table and then also the eucalyptus border at the top. So let's go ahead and create our templates for each table. I download the eucalyptus graphic and then upload that to Cricut Design Space. So how I do that is download the zip file just straight from Creative Fabrica. This does have multiple frames in it, so we are going to need to open and extract all of these using the compressed folders tools. Once you extract the frames though, they are super easy to relocate for you to upload into Cricut Design Space, or I can just pull this folder off to the side, open up my Cricut Design Space on the other side of my computer, go to the upload an image option, and drag the frame that I want right over. Now we are going to save this as a complex image type and upload this to our canvas as a print and cut. Now that the eucalyptus border is on our canvas, I could use the entire border, but I was worried about the sizing of the names and having enough space. So I am actually going to slice out a little portion of this that I want to use at the very top of my card. I'm going to duplicate my first card since I'm going to need this extra one in a minute and then I position the eucalyptus where I want it on the table number. Once it is where I want it, I select both the border and the square that we have and slice. And now that is going to cut it out of the image, but what it also does is cut it out of the card stock, so that is why I made the second card. I pull out the portion that I'm going to use and delete out the rest. And now I can align and center to the top without any extra white space around. Now I am ready to add in our table number and the names. So over here to the add text, I enter in table one and change that to the correct font. Whenever you add in the text, it will automatically go to this kind of like darker gray color, but the couple wants black lettering, so I'm actually going to change that and then make sure it is centered on the card. Now we can enter in the guest names with some more text. I'm just going to add in name, 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 but you can copy and paste from your own seating chart assignments. Then I change that to the correct font and color as well. Mm -hmm. 
Now we have some spacing issues here that we need to work on. I really like Paradiso at a negative two line spacing, but even on this, there's just too much space in between, I think, and like a lot of blank space in between there. So what we are going to do is bump that to even a five, and then I'm also going to bump out the letter spacing on that. I usually like to do a two, but sometimes with projects like this, we are restricted on the space, and there's just not a ton of extra space to work with on either side of everybody's names. So you can play around with the sizing that you like, but once you get your names in the center and the table number in the center, then that card design is complete. But before I flatten that, I am going to duplicate this for table two. I adjust the table number, delete the names, and paste in the new ones for that specific table. Once you do that, it's so easy to keep duplicating because the text color is going to be the same. You're going to have the same font on all of them and the spacing is going to be the same. It's just the easiest way to bust out a bunch of tables. So I do that for all 23 tables and design the header with the same font. So let's just imagine that I have all 24 cards made here. I select the entire card, so nothing else around it, just the one card. So that's going to select the backing, the border, the table number, and the names. And I'm going to flatten that all together. So basically going to flatten that all onto one card. So it is going to print and then cut as one. Once I have the first table done, then I just move on to the next table, flatten that all together, move on to the next, flatten that all together until I have all 24 cards ready to cut. We don't need this placeholder to make our project, so we are going to delete that out, and now we are ready to print and cut our project. This is how each table will look on the printed piece of paper. So this is going to be your piece of paper here, the bigger white portion, and then this is going to be your table that is going to print on that. So one table per one piece of cardstock. And now we are going to go ahead and print all of these at once. Since these are all the exact same size, I can just hit continue to send to printer and also removing the bleed while I am doing that. Now I print all of these at the same time. Like I said before, these are the exact same size, so it doesn't really matter that I keep them in order for when I'm cutting them on the Cricut Maker. I can just go ahead and cut them all in whatever order that I want to save some time. Once I have all my tables printed, I go ahead and select the heavy cardstock setting and head over to my Cricut Maker. I like using the light grip mat or using a regular grip, but one that has been used a lot so it's not quite as sticky for the cardstock to easily be able to peel back off of that once it is cut. And sometimes whenever I am using this thicker cardstock, I actually have to make two cuts on my machine. It doesn't matter how much pressure I have set on my Cricut Maker. This is actually set to the highest pressure that it can cut and it's still not enough to go through this cardstock with one cut. So what I do is I do the one regular pass and instead of letting that come out of my machine after the first cut, I go ahead and push the center button, which is the one with the little Cricut logo on it. It'll be right next to the flashing arrow one that wants you to eject your project. Instead of ejecting it, just hit the Cricut button again. It will actually cycle through and do a second pass. You can do a third, fourth if you need, but two is plenty for me and it does a super clean cut on this thick cardstock.
Now it is time to apply the cardstock pieces to my wood backing. This is the same wood backing that I use for my wood and vinyl signs. I also have a wood stick that I'm using. It is about a one by one inch along with a large cutting mat to help align everything. I lay the wood on top of my 24 inch wide mat, which has hash marks at each inch that I can see past the 24 inches. This mat is not a Cricut cutting mat. This is actually a 24 by 36 inch uh, mat that is made for cutting fabric and sewing, but I like to use it to help align and center vinyl and decals to my signs. So I put all of the tables on the wood piece, get them all in order and about in the position that I will be attaching them to the wood. I use that one by one piece of wood that will help me create a one inch gap between each of the rows. And then I also take a pen or a pencil and mark exactly where those are aligning on the piece of wood just so I can do that first row perfect, move that down to the second, make that row exactly the same as the first and keep going down row by row working through the same. Now that everything is in position, I go card by card, adding double-sided tape to those and then putting that card right back in its place. I use my soft scraper just to make sure everything is adhered really well and then I work through each card doing the same. I didn't add any sort of sealer to the top of this but for transporting this I did wrap it in plastic just to make sure it stayed super clean and flat. Thank you so much for watching this and supporting my channel. If you aren't already, subscribe so I can see you at the next video and let me know any questions that you have down below in the comment section. See you soon.